Good evening and welcome to Rajya Sabha TV. My name is Aditi Nagpal Girotra and you are watching news tonight. And here we are once again with all the updates from India and around the world. The much awaited batch of five Rafale fighter jets touched down to a special water cannon salute at the Ambala Air Base on Wednesday. The French manufactured Rafale multi-role combat jets covered nearly 7000 kilometers and were escorted by two Sukhoi 30 MK1s after they entered the Indian airspace. All the details in this report. Five Rafale combat aircraft landed at the Ambala Air Base from France after an overnight pit stop in UAE on Wednesday. On their landing, the five fighter jets were given a water salute. On entering the Indian airspace, two Sukhoi 30 MKIs escorted the Rafale fighters. Before entering Indian airspace, the Rafale jets first established contact with Indian Navy warship INS Kolkata in the Western Arabian Sea. Air Chief Marshal RKS Bhadoria himself received the Rafale combat jets at the Ambala Air Base. The addition of Rafale fighter jets to the Indian Air Force is being termed as a game changer in the security architecture of the region. These fighter jets will be inducted into the Indian Air Force Golden Arrow Squadron. Rafale is a twin jet multi-role combat aircraft manufactured by Dassault Aviation. It is capable of ground support, aerial reconnaissance, in-depth strikes, interception and nuclear deterrence. It can carry a payload of 9500 kilograms and has a top speed of 2223 kilometers per hour. Each Rafale can carry two fire and forget scalp cruise missiles to hit high value fortified targets well over 300 kilometers away. The Rafales are also armed with Meteor air to air missiles with a strike range of 120 to 150 kilometers. The induction of the Rafale fighter jet is a much needed capacity booster for the Indian Air Force particularly because of the combat proven capabilities of the jet uh, in the areas of electronic warfare ground support and air defense it also helps india to deal with the heightened nature of the chinese threat particularly as becomes clear that the current border standoff with the pla in ladakh will stretch into the winter months Uh, the deliveries also demonstrate the special nature of the strategic partnership between Paris and New Delhi. Welcoming the Rafale fighter jets, Prime Minister Narendra Modi tweeted in Sanskrit that there is no virtue like protecting the nation and no pledge like defense of the nation. He also shared a video of Rafale jets landing. Union Defence Minister Rajnath Singh said the touchdown of Rafale combat aircraft in India marks the beginning of a new era in our military history. He added that the multi-role aircraft will revolutionize the capabilities of the Indian Air Force. Union Home Minister Amit Shah called it a historic day for the Indian Air Force and a proud moment for India. He said these are world's powerful machines that can thwart any challenge in the sky. With the arrival of three single seater and two twin seater aircraft delivery of 10 aircraft is completed. The remaining five aircraft are currently in France for training. The government had inked a 59000 crore rupees deal on 23rd September 2016 for 36 Rafale jets from French aerospace major Dassault Aviation. Asian security architecture requires a strong Indian defense system and Rafale will indeed add to india's strength it will be interesting to see that how our rivals react but they must be feeling chilling impact after arrival of rafale in india akhilesh suman for raj sabha television in delhi the union cabinet under prime minister modi on wednesday approved the new national education policy The government has also decided to rename the Ministry of Human Resource Development as the Education Ministry. 34 साल से शिक्षा नीति में परिवर्तन नहीं हुआ था और 
इसलिए आज का ये जो परिवर्तन है और जो नई शिक्षा नीति है मुझे विश्वास है कि पूरा समाज और सभी देशवासी इसका स्वागत करेंगे और दुनिया के शिक्षाविद भी इसको निश्चित रूप से सराहना करेंगे नई शिक्षा नीति 2020 मील का पत्थर साबित होगी इस देश की ऐसी शिक्षा नीति जो उन्नीस के बाद जो स्कूली शिक्षा और उच्च शिक्षा में उसकी परिवर्तन कारी सुधारों के लिए एक महत्वपूर्ण रास्ता प्रशस्त करेगा देश की जो प्रमुख आठ भाषाएं हैं तमिल तेलुगु कन्नड़ मलयालम इधर गुजराती मराठी और ओडिया बंगाली तो इनमें हम ई कोर्सेस डेवलप करेंगे केवल इंग्लिश हिंदी में नहीं बल्कि रीजनल लैंग्वेजेस में भी ई कोर्स रहेंगे वर्चुअल लैब्स पर कार्य आईआईटी मेड्रास ने शुरू कर दिया है द न्यू एजुकेशन पॉलिसी एक्सटेंड्स द राइट टू एजुकेशन कवरिंग चिल्ड्रन अंडर द एज ग्रुप थ्री टू एटीन ईयर्स करंटली द रूल अप्लाइज ओनली टू स्टूडेंट स्टिल द एज ऑफ फोर्टीन ईयर्स The new national education policy aims to universalize the pre-primary education by 2025 and provide foundational literacy to all by 2025. The last NEP was set up in 1968 and updated in 1992. Now the NEP 2020 will be available in 22 languages and audio books. Standalone higher education institutes and professional education institutes will be evolved into multidisciplinary education. mathematical thinking scientific temper will be part of the course students will be allowed to take up coding starting class 6 core curriculum subjects like sports vocational arts commerce science everything will be at the same level students can opt for courses as per choice board exams will undergo a huge change the common entrance exam for all higher education institutes will be held by the national testing agency the exam will be optional and not mandatory Prime Minister Narendra Modi thanked all those who worked hard in formulation of the new education policy. In a Twitter message, he said, "The new education policy will be remembered as a shining example of participative governance." The center has released guidelines for the third phase of unlock that comes into effect from 1st August across the country. With unlock 3, the Home Ministry is allowing more activities outside containment zones. However, lockdown will continue to be strictly enforced in containment zones till 31st of August. Under the new guidelines, night curfew has been removed. Gymnasiums and yoga institutes have been allowed to open from the 5th of August. For this, standard operating procedure will be issued by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Further, Independence Day functions will be allowed with social distancing and by following other health protocols, including wearing of masks, etc. Schools, colleges, and coaching institutions will remain closed till 31st August. International air travel of passengers has been permitted in a limited manner under the Vande Bharat Mission. Further opening up will take place in a calibrated manner. Some activities and functions will continue to be restricted or prohibited in Unlock 3. Accordingly, metro rail, cinema halls, swimming pools, entertainment parks, theaters, bars, auditoriums and assembly halls will remain closed. Large congregations are not allowed. Dates for opening them will be decided separately. There is no restriction on interstate and intrastate movement of persons and goods. States may prohibit some activities outside containment zones. Use of Arogya Setu mobile application will continue to be encouraged. Infections in India have crossed 15 lakh after over 45,000 new cases were reported for the seventh consecutive day. India, the third most affected country by total cases and sixth by death toll, has added over 3.38 lakh new cases in the past seven days. However, India's recovery rate is steady at over 64%. Total COVID-19 infections in India crossed 15 lakh on Tuesday with over 48,513 fresh cases. 768 deaths were also reported in the last 24 hours. 
Total fatalities due to the infection stand at 34,193. There are over 5 lakh active cases, while close to 10 lakh people have recovered. The gap between active patients and recovered patients is over 4,78,000. The recovery rate is 64.51%. Case fatality rate in India is 2.23%. Over 1 crore 77 lakh samples have been tested, including over 4 lakh on Tuesday. India is testing 12,858 samples per million people. For the first time in weeks, Maharashtra did not register the highest daily case high. The highest number of cases were instead reported from Andhra Pradesh, which recorded 7,948 new cases. Maharashtra added 7,717 fresh cases. Tamil Nadu and Karnataka recorded 6,972 and 5,536 new cases of COVID-19 in the last 24 hours. Uttar Pradesh recorded 3,490, while Bihar reported 2,480 new cases. Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Delhi, Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka have the maximum case low. It has taken only 12 days for cases to rise from 10 lakh to 15 lakh in the country. However, India's recovery rate has also seen a sharp increase from around 58% when cases were over 5 lakh to more than 64.5% till date. The fatality rate has also decreased from 3.08% to 2.23%. Testing has also increased manifold from over 1.9 lakh tests per day on an average. India is now testing over 4.3 lakh samples per day on average. 15 states have a higher recovery rate than the national average. These include Delhi, Ladakh, Haryana, Assam, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh and Manipur. In the last two weeks, Delhi, Manipur, Telangana, Tamil Nadu and Gujarat have reported the least growth in active cases. A zero survey conducted in Mumbai showed that 57% people tested in slums had been exposed to and developed antibodies against the virus as compared to only 16% of those tested in residential societies. BMC conducted the study on 6,936 people from three municipal wards. The survey also found that more women than men had developed antibodies. The fatality rate was also found to be low. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. In some other COVID-19 updates, weekly lockdown will be imposed in Andaman and Nicobar Islands to contain the spread of the virus. Here are all the other COVID-19 updates. The Andaman and Nicobar administration will impose a complete lockdown on weekends beginning the 1st of August to contain the spread of COVID-19. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal has ordered de-linking of hotels attached with hospitals in view of the improving COVID-19 situation in the national capital. Tiruvananthpuram has decided to continue with the lockdown but decided to ease certain curbs to ensure livelihood and revive normal day-to-day -day activities. However, these relaxations will not be applicable in critical containment zones. Continuing the international collaboration to fight COVID-19 after giving a go-ahead to the monthly export of 50 lakh units of PPEs, the government has allowed export of 4 crore surgical masks and 20 lakh medical goggles every month. As part of its assistance in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic, France has handed over 120 ventilators, test kits and other medical equipment to India. The World Health Organization has warned against complacency in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Calling the infection one big wave, the agency said it does not share influenza's tendency to follow seasons. Calling the infection one big wave, the agency said it does not share influenza's tendency to follow seasons. The warning comes amid accelerating coronavirus cases. Total cases in the world are now 17 million. Over 6.6 .6 lakh people have died. The United States had 33,884 new COVID-19 cases on Tuesday, while 20 states cancelled reopening plans. In Latin America and the Caribbean, COVID-19 cases crossed 4.5 million on Tuesday. Brazil had 2.48 million cases. Peru reported 5,288 new cases, taking its total to over 3.95 lakh. Spain's Madrid mandated wearing masks in public areas from Thursday. 
It also limited gatherings to 10 people and cut down timings of late night bars and discos. Spain reported 13,000 new cases of COVID-19 since last week. Belgium also tightened restrictions. Family gatherings were limited to five people. For public events, the number is 100. Italy extended its emergency until 15th of October. It has seen 35,000 deaths and 2.46 lakh COVID-19 cases. However, new infections have fallen sharply in the last three months due to containment measures. Australia's Victoria reported 295 new cases on Wednesday. Emergency teams have been sent to old-age care centres to tackle the virus outbreak. Japan reported its biggest spike of nearly 1,000 new cases on Tuesday. China's Xinjiang has fresh COVID-19 clusters. The country recorded over 100 new cases on Tuesday to bring its nationwide tally to 84,060. Lebanon is reinforcing lockdown from 30th of July until 3rd of August. Places of worship, cinemas, bars, nightclubs, sports events and markets are closed for two weeks. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. The Defence Ministry on Wednesday unveiled the second draft of its Defence Acquisition Procedure 2020. A review committee finalised the amended draft that is based on defence reforms as announced in the Atm Nirbhar Bharat Abhiyan. The defence acquisition procedure ensures timely procurement of military equipment, systems and platforms through optimum utilisation of budgetary resources. According to the draft, the DAP will provide for the highest degree of probity, fair competition and level playing field. In addition, it will ensure self-reliance in defence equipment production and acquisition to help India develop as a global defence manufacturing hub. The draft is uploaded on the Defence Ministry website. It invites suggestions and comments from stakeholders and general public latest by the 10th of August. The first draft was web-hosted and comments were solicited from various stakeholders by 17th of April. This was later extended to 8th of May. Suggestions received so far run into over 10,000 pages. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu has called for protecting and promoting Indian languages through the use of mother tongue in different fields. Inaugurating an online webinar on knowledge creation mother tongue organized by the Hyderabad University and the Telugu Academy, Venkaya Naidu emphasized the need to make education in mother tongue compulsory up to primary level. He also advised the teachers and parents to encourage the children to speak in their mother language. The Vice President said it was wrong to believe that modern research can be conducted only if one was proficient in English. He said that complex scientific and technical terms should be simplified in Indian languages. He also called upon researchers to find the endangered words and promote their use in day-to-day -day conversations, essays and textbooks to revive decaying languages. Vice President Naidu also said mother tongue plays an important role in preserving music, dance, customs, festivals, traditional knowledge and heritage. He also asked the media to promote the widespread use of native languages. Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Mauritian counterpart Pravind Jagnath will on Thursday jointly inaugurate Mauritius's new Supreme Court building, which has been constructed with Indian assistance. The inauguration will take place through video conferencing in the presence of senior members of the Mauritian judiciary and other dignitaries from both countries. Akhilesh Suman brings us more details. West. Underlining India's renewed focus on its neighbourhood policy, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Mauritian Prime Minister Praveen Jagannath will together inaugurate the new Supreme Court building of the island nation on Thursday. The building has been constructed with Indian grant assistance and is the first India-assisted infrastructure project within the capital city of Port Louis. According to the Ministry of External Affairs, the new Supreme Court building project is one of the five projects being implemented under the Special Economic Package of 353 million US dollars extended by India to Mauritius in 2016. The project has been completed within schedule and below expected costs. The building is spread over more than 4,700 square meters with over 10 floors and a built-up area of 25,000 square meters. It has green features and high energy efficiency 
and will house all divisions and offices of the Supreme Court. West. India also announced the implementation of nine high-impact community development projects in Mauritius. In October 2019, Prime Minister Modi and the Prime Minister of Mauritius had jointly inaugurated Phase 1 of the Metro Express project and the new ENT hospital project in Mauritius, also built under the Special Economic Package. The MEA says the successful and timely completion of India-assisted high-quality infrastructure projects in Mauritius will create greater opportunities for Indian companies in Mauritius and also in the region. This is the success of India's foreign policy towards its neighbour that even amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, India is capable of helping its neighbours, like handing over our building to Mauritius government. Uh, even India gave 10 locomotive engines to Bangladesh amidst this pandemic. India also gave uh, assistance, development assistance to Maldives and also $400 million currency swap facility to Sri Lanka. This is really an example that how our neighborhood first policy is getting success. As scientists started assembling the world's largest fusion device at ITER in southern France on Tuesday, India said the project demonstrated the country's capabilities for design and manufacturing at the most advanced levels. A special message from Prime Minister Narendra Modi was delivered by India's envoy to France, Javed Ashraf, during the virtual ceremony at ITER headquarters on Tuesday that marked the start of the assembly. Leaders of many countries attended the event virtually. In his message, Prime Minister Modi said that Indian scientists have made valuable contributions to the ITER project. Modi said the beginning of the ITER assembly activities is an extraordinary journey of many years of commitment, dedication and hard work by scientists, engineers and technicians. India is proud to be part of a global enterprise that is at the frontier of science and engineering. Indian scientists have made valuable contribution to the development and fabrication of the cryostat, the cooling system, the cryo distribution system, and several kilometers of cryo lines. The project is also very special because it involves international collaboration at an unprecedented level. This shared endeavor for a common good is a perfect symbol of the age-old Indian belief, Vasudeva Kutumbaka. That means the entire world is one family. Today's event is an important step towards a better tomorrow for mankind. And on behalf of 1.3 billion Indians, I wish the ETA project all success. The International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor or ITER project aims to replicate the energy of the sun. On Tuesday, it reached a critical phase as scientists and technicians in southern France began assembling huge parts of a nuclear fusion device. India had formally joined the ITER project in 2005 and the ITER agreement between the partners was signed in 2006. Rajasthan Governor Kalraj Mishra returned Chief Minister Ashok Gehlot's proposal to convene the State Assembly session for the third time. The Governor was responding to Gehlot's revised proposal sent on Tuesday. It was the third one since the 23rd of July. On Monday, the Governor advised the government to follow three points, including serving a 21-day notice to legislators before calling the session. Rajasthan Governor Kalraj Mishra also cancelled Independence Day at home event due to the COVID-19 situation in the state. The Chief Minister met the Governor for the fourth time. Meanwhile, Govind Singh Dutasra formally took over as the new Chief of the Rajasthan Congress on Wednesday. He replaced Sachin Pilot, who had been sacked by the party for dissidents. The National Investigation Agency on Tuesday concluded the two-day questioning of M. Shiv Shankar, former Principal Secretary to Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan in the Kerala gold smuggling case. 
The questioning went on for over 10 hours after which Siva Sankar was allowed to go home. He was questioned for 9 hours on Monday as well. The questioning relates to investigation into the smuggling of gold through air cargo shipments addressed to the Consulate of the UAE in Thiruvananthapuram. Senior IS officer M. Seva Sankar was removed as Principal Secretary to Chief Minister Pinnarai Vijayan over allegations of his links with the key suspect Swapna Suresh. Indian authorities have arrested four people in the case Swapna Suresh, Sarit P.S., K.T. Ramis, and Sandeep Nair. Swapna Suresh and Sandeep Nair were sent to five days customs custody by a court on Tuesday. The case relates to seizure of gold weighing over 30 kilograms and valued at over 15 crore rupees on 5th of July. July 29th is Global Tiger Day, a day aimed at creating awareness about tiger conservation. Celebrating the occasion, Environment Minister Prakash Chavrekar saluted frontline forest personnel whose efforts, he said, have taken the tiger population on the assured path of recovery in the country. In his message, the minister said, Tiger conservation is a classic example of Atmanirbharta as envisaged by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Today is the Tiger's Day. So, this is the बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है भारत के प्राकृतिक वैभव के लिए जीव विविधता के लिए और भारत दुनिया में नेतृत्व करता है क्योंकि दुनिया के 70% बाघ भारत में है ये बिछड़े हुए बाघों के बच्चे हो अनाथ बच्चे हो या बुजुर्ग बाघ हो या जख्मी बाघ हो उसके भी रक्षा की एक खास प्रणाली भारत ने तैयार की है इस सब में प्रयासरत लोग और कर्मचारी अधिकारी सबको मैं बहुत बधाई देता हूं जावड़ेकर सेड दैट इंडिया हैज 2967 टाइगर्स एज पर द लेटेस्ट टाइगर सेंसस द नेशन रजिस्टर्ड एन इंक्रीज ऑफ 741 टाइगर्स इन द लास्ट 4 इयर्स Javrekar said Project Tiger was launched in 1973 with just nine tiger reserves and today the country has 50 tiger reserves. On Twitter, President Ramnath Govind complimented the National Tiger Conservation Authority, Wildlife Institute of India, State Forest Departments, Forest Officers and all stakeholders for their efforts. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu also congratulated the government for successfully implementing Project Tiger. He said a dedicated approach towards Project Tiger, India has doubled its tiger population much before the target year 2022. Naidu also asked people to spread awareness on the importance of protecting tigers and the crucial role they play in preserving the ecosystems. He urged further commitment towards saving tigers and protecting their habitats. And with this, it's a wrap on this edition of News Tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. With this, we'll halt in for a quick breather, but we'll be back soon. Stay tuned with us.